hungry, you know you're upset. I'm Joe Riccio and welcome to Food Coma, My 70s Kitchen, uh, coming at you straight from My 70s Kitchen. Uh, today we're going to combine the best of both worlds. Uh, we're gonna make what I call butter cashew chicken. It's a bastardized version of Indian butter chicken, uh, as well as uh, Chinese American dish uh, cashew chicken, originated at a place called the Grove Supper Club in Springfield, Missouri. And every time I think about any Chinese American dishes being invented, uh, I always think about that scene from Waiting for Guffman uh, at the Chinese restaurant where Eugene Levy is describing uh, his friend's trip to China and how you can't get a sauce that thick and sweet over there. They, the food is steamed or something. Uh, so every time I make Chinese American food, I always think of uh, the struggles to <laughs> accommodate palates that just want fat and sugar. Essentially, I'm making a stir fry with the chicken. I wanted the texture of cashew chicken that sort of slippery texture you get from a, a technique called velveting, where you flash fry the chicken, and we're also gonna add cashews, because I figured why not. You flash fry the chicken in the deep fryer, uh, and then you finish it in the wok in the stir fry, and it adds a really nice texture. Uh, and then for the for the butter sauce, it almost feels like making a, like a country, for like country fried steak, like a country gravy. So we're gonna start by sauteing uh, some onions and ghee right here, which I have heating up. Uh, and then we're gonna incorporate all the spices, finish it with some coconut milk, some chicken stock. Uh, I made a slurry out of cornstarch here to kind of thicken it up a little bit. Uh, and that will be our, our butter sauce that we're gonna put in at the ends of everything. So I like to personally, when I make a mise en place, I take things that are gonna be combined anyway. Uh, and rather than have like six extra bowls, I'm like, oh, well at this point, the tomato sauce is going in with the dried fenugreek leaves, so why don't I just put those in there already? Or ginger and garlic, and I'm actually gonna do a little orange zest in here because I usually do orange zest in my cashew chicken, and I figured that orange and butter, uh, not a bad flavor combination. On our pot that does conduct heat on this, which is nice, we're gonna put a little, some, just some, ah, look at that. That's the sizzle. Onion says, hello, ghee. It's important to remind you, this dish is going to contain an upsetting amount of butter because it's butter chicken. And if your butter chicken doesn't have a lot of butter in it, that just undoes everything as far as the, the, the stitches of the universe, they just come undone. That's like, uh, you know, proving that God is fallible if there were such thing as God. Uh, it's like that, apocalyptic. If you don't have enough butter in your butter chicken, you're dead to me. And never invite me over unless you have really good wine. I won't eat your food. Drink the shit out of your wine, I'll tell you what. So first off, we're gonna add some ginger, garlic, and orange zest. This is like that time that I put the coconut rice with the mapo tofu. I know it's not traditional. I know this isn't how you make butter chicken. I understand that. Why don't you? Okay, that's smelling delicious. Uh, we're gonna add our spice blend now. So this is uh, garam masala with some cashmere chili paste and a cinnamon stick. And because of our ghee, we can stir this around, get this paste, fry the paste a little bit. That'll just deepen the flavor. You know, don't burn it, keep it moving. But you can see how pretty. I'm kind of making a roux, this, you know. We're gonna add some tomato sauce with some dried fenugreek leaves. Professional. Perfect. Never had a lesson. No thanks to you, Dad. Just into, into movie quotes today. I think uh, on a previous episode, I mentioned Shooter McGavin, and here I am in the Adam Sandler train again, rolling with bringing some wedding singer into it, which, you know, it's a little cutesy at moments, but there's a lot of gold in that movie, I'll tell you that. So the tomato here is starting to happen. We got our dried fenugreek leaves in there. Um, that's gonna, that's, that's, that's one of those things that's a pivotal component in a lot of Indian dishes like tikka masala. And when you try to make your own, it doesn't taste like a restaurant, it's because you don't have that in there. You should get it. Dried fenugreek leaves, they're, they're delicious. We're gonna name this burner. We get you name it like Chad or Todd the burner. Todd is not getting hot. Fast enough here. Gunner, Duffy, Tigger, Alton. Don't burn the fucking tomatoes. What we're gonna do now is we are going to add some coconut milk to that. 
stir that about. All right, so we added our coconut milk here. I'm gonna add a little bit of our slurry with cornstarch. We're gonna bring this to a boil, stirring until it starts to thicken. I love the way the uh, tomato, that's where you get that orange color. A lot of times it's funny, Indian restaurants, uh, at least some of them that I've actually, I go to a lot and I spend some time in the kitchen, they use something like the Shan seasoning, almost like a food coloring. So you get that really red, orangey color. Uh, that's very pleasing, um, but you don't really need to add that. I could have, but this is getting plenty orange, as you can see, and it's gonna get nice and thick for us too. But at the same time, it's, you know, we want it to be the kind of food you can dip some naan into. So it's gotta be a little, you know, a little saucy. We don't want it to be quite as thick as a country gravy. Okay, so our sauce is thickening up here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of Malden salt. Just a little, just a pinch. Toss that over there. Some white pepper, fresh grass. A cube of Kerrygold butter, because it's butter chicken. And as I said earlier, don't be coming around with your butter chicken without a ton of butter in it. So I'm gonna let that sauce kind of hang out for a little bit and get delicious. Now, we're gonna start getting towards the stir fry. So, wearing pro fryer here that I've had for probably, let's see, 2006. How long ago was that, 14 years? Still going. It's a little worse for wear, but she still keeps the temperature. Uh, so what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna deep fry the cashews for about a minute, uh, move those to a paper towel line plate, and then we're gonna deep fry and strain. And always, by the way, put things into the basket rather than dip, throwing them into the basket, into the fryer. Do the basket first, then into the fryer. But uh, then the chicken, we're gonna fry for one to two minutes, uh, put that aside to strain, and then we're gonna start with our stir fry. And basically we're gonna finish the whole affair with the butter sauce at the end. All right, so the cashews are going in. We're at about 375. So cashews are obviously dry, there's no liquid there, so it's not gonna make, it's not gonna be as dramatic when you put it into the fry oil, which is a good thing, uh, because fry oil hurts when you get it on you. And in preparation, while that fries, we're gonna get some of our New Zealand ghee here, ready to stir fry. The cashews, like I said, you don't need long for these things because they're gonna get cooked again in the stir fry. Oh yeah. That's delicious. A little more bavla. And let's do some black pepper too because there's no grown ups around to tell us we can't. So let's do that. Take out our cashews. We're gonna let those hang out on the paper towel. The chicken has been marinating overnight, so it should be nice, tender. I did boneless, skinless chicken thighs. If you're gonna marinate the chicken, you can do breasts and it'll be fine. Um, I don't advocate for chicken breasts in situations with like high heat where you know, you're gonna overcook it and it's gonna dry out and be terrible. I mean, if you're gonna marinate it or brine it, if you're gonna do something overnight, the breast will be fine. But the thigh is always better because the thighs taste better. So, and it's gonna be a little more dramatic. Like I said, one to two minutes on this. It'll be fine. Stand away from the fryer. I don't, I don't wanna be the subject of one of those YouTube videos, man filming cooking show, now horribly maimed because of cashew chicken. All right, so this we're gonna, we're gonna pour this directly into a colander and then we're gonna kill it on, always unplug the fryer, you know, be done with it. Fryer safety, I feel, I feel really bad talking about fryer safety while something's frying because that's just, inviting fate to burn me very badly. I'd say we're good now. So I wanna direct my chicken, direct traffic here into this colander. A real chef would have a, 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 an actual drying rack or some kind of rack to put that on, but uh, you know, around here we improvise. So we're gonna do the colander. See, now the butter, the butter sauce wants to get hot. I'm telling you, 
This burner is the devil. All right, let's get the stir fry going. So we're gonna heat our ghee over nice and hot temperature. Uh, then we're gonna saute our, our peppers and onions. The sauce already has ginger and garlic in it, so no need to add that to the wok. It's deceiving because the chicken already smells really good and it looks like you should eat it, but it's not cooked all the way through. So don't pop it in your mouth yet, even though it smells and looks delicious, I'm telling you. It's awesome. It's, it's, I would literally marinate anything in it. And it has this beautiful like burnished color to it. Waiting for that green light on the walk. It's rare that I get really excited to, actually it's not rare at all. I'm always excited to eat the things that I cook, but I'm weirdly excited to eat this. So walk's getting nice and hot. Time to add our onions and peppers. This is a, again, I do not want to knock the butter. You know what I'm going to do with the butter sauce? Moving it. It's plenty cooked. That way I can be, you got to be able to be aggressive with your wok. You got to be able to shake it. And if you're worried about knocking an entire pot of delicious sauce onto the floor, now that's going to get right in the way of all your, your wok swagger. Now, with a Cuisinart countertop burner, you can't get what Martin Yan would call wok he or the breath of the wok or any kind of real wok flavor that you only get from a wok engulfed in flames. But you know what? We work with it here. I was just informed that you can get wok he, Chef J. Kenji Lopez apparently takes a blowtorch to the top of everything because that's what you're going for, smoke and fire. And there's no smoke and fire with an electric burner. This is the Nissan Sentra of burners. If you want one of those Maseratis, you gotta get a gas burner. But you know what? You have to cook it that much longer and it's gonna be fine. And you know what? We're making butter chicken anyway. So there's no such thing as breath of the walk when you smother it in a creamy butter sauce. So it doesn't even matter. We're all good. Over here at Camp Joe, we're fine. Counselors are gone. We could do whatever we want for the rest of the summer. Stay six feet away. Leave me alone. I'm cooking. Watch it. All right. I don't even need to do this. <laughs> but I'm going to. Okay. All right. So now that stir fry is going, we're going to add the, uh, the chicken. So this is where we finish cooking the chicken. We're also going to add the cashews in a moment. So everything kind of hangs out together. The reason I started doing this is because I love the texture of Chinese stir fried chicken so much. And I love butter sauce so much. So I'm like, why can't they live in harmony together? And they can. Cashews in. You want the cashews stir fry in there. Nothing better than like fried cashews because they're like they're kind of soft, but they still chewy and taste delicious. And there's butter sauce all over the floor. That's all right. When our corporate cleanup crew shows up, it'll be like I was never here. Now feel free to like go leave intervals, let the chicken hang out. So hopefully it'll brown a little bit more. Oh yeah, that chicken's done. All right, you ready for the money shot though is the thing? And, oh yeah. Now the one important thing I would say here is don't eat the cinnamon stick. That will be the worst. So, we can sort of take this off the heat. Kill the heat, actually, because it's already plenty hot. And this sauce gets nice and thick and happy. Add our fun green scallions. That looks about right. Looks like butter chicken, right? With some stir fry. 
Hell yeah. And I made a nice, uh, you see a nice long grain basmati here, which is absolutely delicious. It's almost like cross between like basmati rice and like pasta. Here we go, moment of truth. All right, and I'm gonna finish it with a couple more scallions for, for color there. I'm gonna give it a little squeeze of lime. It's a little acidity, never hurt anybody, especially with all this butter and cream and richness. It's exactly like what you'd imagine. It's like stir-fried chicken. And if you wanted to, you could actually, um, you can make a raita, so a, an Indian uh, kind of a yogurt and uh, a yogurt and cucumber condiment. And top this with a dollop of that, especially if you make it really spicy like I did. It kind of cools it out, makes it look good, good for garnishing, but yeah, there it is, butter chicken, cashew chicken, like, Van, like, like Sammy Hangar and David Lee Roth, coming together, creating this, what we've done today. I'm Joe Riccio, this is My 70s Kitchen.